Goldman Sachs may already know what's in the CPI data that's going to be released tomorrow. And this news article is a little bit off basis. Stock market today, U.S. stocks go nowhere ahead of CPI data. Well, the stocks are basically closing near the highs of the session. And the question is, will the inflation trade start to unwind as early as tomorrow? Because we started to see the ABC projection patterns already been taken out. The last two days, we have now produced wicks on top of the candles for the gold contract. Then we see articles like this, Costco is selling as much as 2 million in gold bars monthly. That's what Wells Fargo is estimating at this time. At a time when Jamie Dimon is saying interest rates could rise to as much as 8%. So who's telling the truth? Are we going to get three rate cuts this year or does Goldman Sachs know something that we don't? If we look at this article right here, what do they know? Goldman Sachs, a Amex quietly cut rates on saving accounts. Is the Fed next? Now we look at this paragraph right here. We are talking about Goldman Sachs and American Express starting with the former last Wednesday. Goldman's consumer bank Marcus lowered the rate on the high yield savings account for the first time in more than three years, trimming the APR on the bank's flagship product to 4.4 versus 4.5. So does Goldman Sachs have insight that the Fed is going to be cutting rates? And if the Fed is going to be cutting rates, wouldn't that mean that the CPI data tomorrow would be coming lower? Because when we look at the Fed watch tool, we can see this has climbed back up, right? This keeps going back and forth. Now we are projecting to get another rate cut out here in june and now they're pricing in three rate cuts it keeps going three to two we started off the year with seven rate cuts being projected then everybody said six then it was five four three two and it's back and forth three to two three to two and a lot of this is going to hinge on does the cpi print tomorrow actually show inflation is starting to abate we look at the fear and greed index we are down at 59 Previous close was 66. When we look at the economic calendar tomorrow, the CPI data will be released at 8.30 a.m. And I wanna see how this is gonna come out for tomorrow. This is gonna be very important. And I do like the fact that the CPI data comes out before the market opens. Then we are not out of the clear. At 101, we have the 10-year bond auction. Then at two o'clock, we have the FOMC meeting minutes. And I don't expect the meeting minutes to have a huge weight on the market, but we have seen sometimes in the past where we get some excitement out of that news. Maybe we'll find out that other FOMC members are hawkish this market. We come over and look at silver today, another inflation play. What do we see? Hanging man candle at the top of the trend after completing an ABC pattern to the upside. This is a little bit worrisome if you're invested in silver at this moment. Now, I'm not saying the end of the move is completely over. What I'm saying is we are likely gonna get a pullback in the near future. Now, we have a couple gaps. Today's gap was filled, the gap before was filled, but we have this gap right down here at 23.85. We have another gap all the way down here at 22.86. So we wanna pay close attention to that. Today, we jump over and take a look at the dollar index. Dollar index, basically a hammer candle, a little double bottom-ish pattern. And tomorrow, we're gonna probably see some big moves in the dollar once we start to see that CPI data filter into the market. Now we look at the 10 year today, 10 year yield today coming lower. And now we're really at jeopardy, right? If we look at this rising trend line we've been watching, are we about to see the 10 year yield come down towards this rising trend line? Now keep in mind when the 10 year rises, this is normally a headwind out here for the stock market. So as the, as the 10 year starts to drift lower, this should be favorable for the bulls in the market. Next, we jump over and take a look at the volatility index and we can see at the moment, we are still above the reclaimed rising trend line at this moment. And we're going to see, are we going to see more volatility spikes in the market? And if we see the big spiking up tomorrow, that is also going to signal that we are likely going to be going lower in the stock market. Now, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a big thumbs up. I want to remind you guys, we're going to be doing another cash giveaway this week on Friday. So make sure you subscribe. You leave a comment on all the videos this week as I'm going to pick a random winner from one of the videos this week and make sure you are subscribed to the email list. That way, if you're the winner, I have a way to deliver you your cash prize. Now, we look at this article right here. NVIDIA stock enters a correction. Here's where the other magnificent seven stocks stand. We go back and we look right here. And essentially what we're going on to say is Apple, now NVIDIA, and also Tesla are in correction or bear market territory. When we come over and look at Tesla, we can see it's been on one heck of a downtrend on the way up. 
However, Tesla today was up $3.90. And we've been talking about the divergence that we've had out here on the MACD indicator. Will Tesla be able to find its footing and come up and maybe come all the way up here, fill in the gap at 188.10? We break above that. Then really look at this next volume node at about 199 on the composite profile. We jump over and take a look at Apple. Now, Apple has me a little bit concerned. And here's why. We can see Apple has come down. We basically put in this low. We came up. We come down towards it. We bounce just a little bit. We come back down towards it. Even more of a feeble bounce up. Then we come back lower. If Apple gives way through here, this is kind of like a bear flag-ish type of pattern. And we can see Apple tumbling a lot lower. When we zoom this out, we don't have a lot of volume that has been built on this composite profile. The next area is really going to be down here towards about 151 on Apple. And if Apple starts to flush, yes, it's not the one, it's not the one stock that's in the media right now, front and center, but Apple is still a very high weight waiting of a lot of the stock indices out there. Now I'll remind everybody, Apex 7 at 80% sale off all their evaluation accounts, pass in as little as one day. If you'd like to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout. We take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA today was down $17.79. And now NVIDIA has broken this swing point over here. So now we have the case where that double top pattern could be in play, bringing NVIDIA down towards 714. And let's remember, we do have a gap right here that was almost filled today, and we have a much larger gap. The MACD indicator basically showing us the divergence up here at this level, and now we have a good separation with a B line going straight to the downside. Now, when we look at Meta, for instance, Meta for the Magnificent 7, steer, still near all-time highs. We take a look at Google, near recent highs in the market, and we come over and we take a look at Microsoft, Microsoft right near all time highs. And it looks like it could be preparing for another breakout in this market. Amazon, Amazon's also near its recent high out here, at least 52 week highs out here for Amazon. Now we do have some gaps. At some point, we will see the market come back and fill these gaps. However, during election year, we know they're gonna try to keep the markets higher. The question is, will they be successful in their attempts to be able to prop stocks up going into the election? We come over and take a look at the Russell 2000 up 81 cents. We're still holding the rising trend line. We're still trading right around this volume. If we can start breaking above, I'd say about 206, 207, we're probably gonna come back and run the recent highs out here. I believe these are the 52 week highs. We take a look at the diamonds. Diamonds still stuck right here in the middle of this consolidation area, right where we have a lot of volume. We break the bottom of this box. We're coming all the way down towards anywhere from 376 down to about 374.50. Then we jump over and look at the cues. Forming a hammer candle. It looks like the cues may wanna to try to make an attempt to reclaim this rising trend line now the next stop for the cues or is next the Q's next test that it needs to get above is 445.72. We get above this volume here, then it could be clear sailings up towards new all-time highs in the market. Out here on the four-hour chart, what do we see today? We got range expansion, except for, you know, it was basically a chop fest. Ran up, trapped them, ran it down, trapped them, and then we ran back up, closing near the highs of the session. So if you guys were playing the volume profile rotation trade, which was one of the three volume profile strategies I shared in last Saturday's video, you guys could have made money on the downside you guys could have made money on the upside playing the simple rotation principle now one thing i am focused on if we look all the way up here i want to go ahead and draw this out before the cpi data comes out i'm going to go ahead and measure i'm going to draw from candle wick to the candle body up here. And this is gonna be a zone that I think we could come back and test. Why? It was a prior swing point. We sliced through it. We have failed to come back and retest it. And we still have the potential for an ABC pattern. However, we now have to redraw that pattern. We have to bring the B to C point a little bit lower. Now that gives us a price projection where? Right, right above that zone that we just mapped out. So again, this is giving me more confidence. We are likely gonna come back up and test that level. And we'll see, will it be tomorrow? Because tomorrow, we do have the catalyst that could push it up towards that area. We come over, look at the NASDAQ, and we see we're just basically building this volume up. Build, 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 build. Now, are we going to break? Now, some areas I do want to focus on, right? If we can continue to build on the strength going into the close, these two volume nodes on the composite profile provide great target locations for me. 18,475 and up here towards 18,549. Then when we dive down and look on the daily chart, keep in mind, here was last Thursday's big, massive sell-off in the market. And we can make the case that maybe tomorrow the CPI data will push us up towards 18,517.75. And with the fact that Goldman Sachs has already started cutting their rates on their credit cards, maybe they already have 
insights into the Fed. Maybe Joe Jay Powell gave him a little whisper in the ear, and now they're already starting to prepare for that. And if if so, that is going to get more and more traders believing the Fed is going to go ahead and start the rate cutting campaign out here in June. And we go ahead and we redraw the ABC pattern on the futures market. Keep in mind, with today's low, we have to redraw it. And notice right where the ABC projection lands, right up here at 18,517.75. Can somebody say confluence? We have more than one point of interest up at that zone. We also have the same area like we talked about with the QQQs. We have this little blue zone on the other stream. We call it the pink, the pink zones, but this is going to be an area where we got to watch out for. This should act as a magnet. This could, this could also provide a reversal area for the market. So tomorrow we're probably going to get the news and we'll see if the news is enough to push us up towards that area. Keep in mind, we are now starting earnings season. So we do have some earnings coming out tomorrow. We have Delta before the bell. And then when we look at the projected moves out here for tomorrow, APLD expected to move plus or minus 19%. Delta Airlines expected to move plus or minus seven to 6% tomorrow. So if you're a trader that likes to trade these stocks, be mindful they have earnings coming out tomorrow morning. Now we look at the spy today the spy coming down with a hammer candle so we have broken out from that from that multiple inside days and we got range expansion however today was nothing more than a shakeout they shook them out they shook out the longs took it down shook out the shorts brought it back up and now the question is are we getting ready to run to a new all-time high let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below because as we dive down and we look at the 30 minute chart you can see they ran it up they broke the b point and then they slammed it back lower i want to go ahead and redraw the fibonacci extension tool meaning the abc pattern i want to grab now a to b equals c to d and we're going to project that gives us a price projection on the spy at about 522.37 now what i like about this this also matches up with the zone candle wick to the candle body we go ahead and project this on over and notice the abc projection comes right in line with our zone that we have drawn out so again we have multiple points of confluence with a point of control that has not been tested slightly above us at 522.84 we also have a fresh cross of the macd indicator then as we come over and look at the futures market look at what we had going on today all right big sell-off out here this morning but then we actually have abc patterns on top of abc patterns we have the first one a to b equals C to D and that brings us with a price completion at 52.58. Now we did go ahead and run all the way to the 127 extension. However, we had another ABC pattern form within this one as well, A to B equals C to D. And we have just barely missed hitting that pattern at this time, which would complete at 52.74.75 up here now will we run it and then turn back lower or are we simply going to go ahead and push substantially higher because when we look at the composite profile we can now see that we have a much larger abc pattern that could be in play we're going to measure a to b equals c to d and that gives us all the way up here towards 5290 and that is just above that thursday big nasty red candle breakdown that we saw last thursday then we come over and look at the daily levels and keep in mind we have this zone drawn out right this is going to be our nda zone but we also have a breakdown zone so really i want to really expand this zone anywhere from about 5287 all the way up here towards the point of control at 52.98. To me, this is gonna be a high probability target location that we're likely gonna hit either tonight or tomorrow. We do have another phenomenon as well, which you guys know how I like to play this. Tonight, we are closing above value area high, which comes in at 52.56.50. So what does that mean? We are likely either tonight, tomorrow, or even the following day gonna come back and test that level. Then if we break that, maybe we come down towards the point of control at 52.34.50. Five zero and value area low will be 52.17. But no, if we stay above value area high, I expect we're going to run up here. I would prefer to come down, test that level. Now, some of the areas, if you're wanting to get long, right? Let's talk about some key levels that you may want to focus on. One would be right here near this NDA zone of the volume profile, which kind of correlates with the swing point over here at about 52.48. The next area I'd look to be interested would be about 52.43. Then from there, right down here, about 52.29. So if you're playing micros, maybe you know want to look at these areas for potential layers into the market for the potential move up substantially higher for tomorrow. Now, I also forgot to mention on the NASDAQ, going back to the NASDAQ real quick, we are also closing above value area high. So that same play for tonight could be intact, meaning that tonight or tomorrow, we are likely going to test 
value area high then from there we'll see do we turn and continue to run up higher or do we start flushing through some of the volume profile levels that we talked about moments ago now if you guys would like to learn three volume profile trading strategies watch this video right here